In this day and time, you would assume that we know just about everything that needs to be known about the big river. And that's just not true. I think we're still in this age of discovery, particularly when it comes to these really hard to sample habitats like the main channel of the Mississippi River. We know that the Mississippi River is an aquatic corridor where fish can move over a thousand miles between the lower miss, the Ohio upper miss, Missouri. And because of that, it is an invaluable habitat that needs to be better understood. We need to understand potential conservation and preservation methods of trying to keep the main channel as natural as possible. Despite all the river training structures that we have in the lower Mississippi River, there's still a lot of naturalness to it that, that hasn't been eliminated through river engineering. I'm talking about the point bars, the island complexes, and then in the river itself, you have the crossings and the deep holes. All of those are, are very valuable to the 100 plus species that live in the lower Mississippi River. The main channel of the Mississippi comprises almost 70% of the aquatic area. So it represents the major habitat type that we have. However, because of difficulties in sampling the main channel, we know little about it. We finally got an opportunity to get a vessel that is adequate to sample the deep, turbulent waters of the lower Mississippi River main channel. This boat that we brought up from New Orleans is a 36-foot shrimp trawler. That boat can sample any depth of water that we encounter in the lower Mississippi River. So we were fortunate to have about four days sampling between Natchez and Old River. This effort down by Natchez was really cool because it allows us to expand that data set and encompass all of the depths available in the lower Mississippi River. And we caught a bunch of really cool fish and we have substrate data as well as water quality data to go with it. One of the challenges with sampling a river as big as the Mississippi is getting habitat data where the fish actually live because a lot of these fish live down at the bottom of these really deep areas, 50, 60, 70 feet deep. Some of the different things that we're interested in that they interact with is the water quality. So what temperature is the water? How much oxygen is available? What's the pH? How much sediment is moving through, which we call turbidity? All of these things are really difficult to measure from the surface when you're trying to get at something 70 feet below. So one of the cool things was that we were able to use this new piece of technology called a YSI XO sond, we were able to measure temperature, conductivity, turbidity, dissolved oxygen, and pH. This is outfitted with these different sensors as well as um, with a computer inside. And so we can set it to take readings as often as we like and it stores the data in here. So what we were able to do was essentially set it to record every second and then drop it slowly throughout the entire water column. And so we get a full transect all the way down as deep as we sampled. Um, and in one case, we sampled a 100 foot deep hole. The visual perspective of the Mississippi River, is, it looks like a barren Sahara Desert and rather sterile environment. And the misconception is that biologically it follows suit with that idea of sampling the bottom of the river at 60 feet of water. That was the most uh, uh, remarkable aspect of, of this, this effort is to be able to pull up this whole suite of fish that you otherwise would not know were there. We've got multiple species of minnows that provide the, the forage base for bigger fish like uh, uh, flathead catfish and channel catfish. Really cool species of, of darters that, that are occupying those habitats that we wouldn't otherwise see. You're tracking species of, of greatest conservation needs like uh, paddlefish and alligator gar and pallid sturgeon, which is federally listed. One of the interesting aspects is that we've been able to do this project twice now, once in the lower mist below New Orleans, the project we call below New Orleans, the lower 30 miles. And in that effort, using the same sort of gear types, provided a really unique snapshot of, of the fish in that area. And then now we've repeated that effort around Natchez and 
provided us with a different snapshot, but it would be really great to be able to kind of continue this effort, not only during um, summer low flow conditions like we've uh, experienced with these previous sampling efforts, but also looking at uh, higher stages or at, at a different seasonal component just to evaluate whether abundance and occurrence of these species differs or changes within those uh, seasonal parameters. And this data that we're collecting is going to be used uh, for multiple purposes. One is we'll be able to evaluate environmental impacts of river engineering activities and mitigate and avoid those impacts to the degree possible. Also with this information, because we're collecting fish and habitat simultaneously, we can develop what we call habitat models. And those habitat models are predictive tools to look at benefits of ecosystem restoration, for example. And we just finished using our database, not for the main channel, but for, the, uh, for other databases that we had, to come up with ecosystem models that were certified by the Corps and used for the lower Mississippi River resource assessment. And it was a very successful program. And by utilizing the shrimp trawler, we can now sample all habitat types. We are not restricted just to a few, but we can now look at all the habitat types across the spectrum of the Lower Mississippi River.